I um, I'm 28 years old, and I have been doing YouTube for uh, about 11 years, coming up on 12, mostly as a hobby until these last two years. Last two years, I started trying to monetize things. I became obsessed with numbers and, and metrics and thumbnails and titles and things like that. And I got to be honest, um, it'll burn you out. And I think that's kind of the importance of having a hobby. I was thinking about what hobbies really are. Hobbies are your sanctum away from the rest of the world. Because, you know, something that people are failing to acknowledge since 2020 is COVID changed all of us to some degree, whether we want to admit it or not. It changed me a lot. I am I am very different. I think what it did is because it kind of, at least in the United States, because the economy is so upside down, it made people more likely to monetize their hobbies. You know, I saw TikToks all over the place that were like, hey, these are the top 10 side hustles to earn X amount of money per week. Or you could go to this coding boot camp, learn how to program in Python and make 1200 a week or whatever, which is not true, by the way. You will not do that. Hobbies are the things that you should cherish and you should keep them sacred and not monetize them. Because if you do, all it's going to do is cause you to get burnout and you'll be even more tired with the way things are in the world. Because, you know, again, things are different. The world is very different. But yeah, for example, I love the gym. I love working out. I love lifting weights. I've been doing that off and on for about 10 years or more. Uh, but if I monetized it, if I made a, a, a gym page, if I made um, a gym TikTok like a lot of people do, <clears throat> I don't think I'd want to go anymore because what happens is you become concerned with views. I have a, a couple TikTok accounts, one of which did very well when Payday 3 was coming out. Rip. And I, I ended up getting like almost 2 million views on multiple different TikToks. And I was proud of that. And I thought it was cool. But then I kind of got tired of it. It was just like, I, I felt this pressure to post consistently to, to get the same dopamine that I got from the, the one or two TikToks that had 400,000 views or half a million or whatever. And so I kind of lost touch with the passion behind it. And it became very mechanical and very soulless. But yeah, in so many words, you know, have hobbies, but don't don't try to make a living off of them necessarily. Because if you do, you will find yourself wrapped up in the pressure to keep making things without the joy of wanting to make them. That's kind of why I took several months off of making a video for the main channel. Um, because, <coughs> excuse me, I really had to come to terms with the wow, nice fart can, dude. I had to come to terms with the fact that you know, I was obsessed with the metrics of each video. And I did it recently, the latest video. The, um, the hell video was it? I don't even remember what it was. The latest video, I became very obsessed with the performance and I was like, well, this is a 30,000 view video, 40,000 views, this will get me back to monetization. And I kept watching and watching. And that's right, it was Starship Troopers. Um, and I became very obsessed with how I was performing and I realized that it was just I don't know, it was stupid to do that because it's like, what, where's where's the joy in it? I, I made it because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed comparing Helldivers 2 to Starship Troopers. I thought it was fun to look for the the likenesses and differences and basically take it as a creative writing assignment. Also, this dude in front of me is just tapping his brakes compulsively. I don't know if I'll cut to my dash cam footage, but Homeboy does not know how to drive. Anyway, what the hell's the matter with these people? But yeah, I lost I lost sight of things, you know, with the with the main channel. And that's kind of what caused me to take a break. And at the end of the day, while I'd love to be successful, I think all of us would. That's why you're probably watching this video. All of us would love to be successful online in some capacity. And many people in my Discord server would love to do that as well. I get it. But I think there's a price that comes with that and something that people don't talk about enough, especially with gaming-related YouTubers. Because I love video games. I grew up playing them, you know, since the age of about five with my dad. I know a lot of video game history because of my dad, because he taught me many things about Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein 3D, um, you know, Commander Keen, all that. He loved Ms. Pac-Man, still does. Um, so, like, I learned a lot about that, the A-Star algorithm, all this stuff. Um, and so if I were to monetize that, I, I, I would hate it. And that's what happened with a lot of games, like Lethal Company. I don't want to play that anymore because I played it for the purpose of trying to make money and get views and now I, I hate it. Payday 3, 
don't want to touch it anymore. I might play it occasionally. I might do a video on it. I kind of want to play it, but about 90% of me doesn't. So if anything, from my incessant repetitive rambling, if you gather anything from this, have hobbies, don't try to make any money off them, just enjoy it. And if you slip and fall ass backwards into a million dollars because your Etsy shop took off, or your artwork, or your tattoos, or whatever became a huge thing, congratulations, enjoy it, and save it. You deserve it. Other than that, don't be afraid to just have a day job. That's something else, too. You know, there are so many people, especially kids, because um, at 17, I thought, that's about when I started YouTube, I thought that I was going to have everything figured out. You know, by, by 25, 26, I thought, and I looked at someone who is now my age and was like, oh, you must have it together. You know, you probably have like a 401k or you have an IRA account or whatever, and you have stocks and you have a house and you know how finances work and taxes. Nobody does. Nobody does. I just, I woke up one day and I was 25. And then the other day I woke up and I was almost 29. <laughs> um, life isn't necessarily short. It is technically the longest thing you will ever do, but it can feel fast if you obsess over things like money, if you obsess over, um, you know, careers, things like that. Certain fixations can be distractions to what is going on. Now, I understand, uh, because I've been broke before and grew up broke, I understand that obsessing over money might be the norm for many of you seeing this because you need to because you don't make enough money because this country isn't fair you're not being treated you know uh, well as, as people you're not even being treated as people in some cases you're probably making 15 an hour because that is the federal minimum that well not actually it's not the state minimum that your state thinks you're worth for you know however many hours a day you work and i'm sorry i, I feel bad for you because i've done that as well i had to do the same grind um I'm not doing much better than the average person. I am because I'm married, and, and our combined income makes us do better. Um, but if I was single, I would be no different than any average person. And it sucks because, you know, I did my time, and I did the right thing, uh, the right thing according to what 2000s and 90s parents said, which is go to college, you know, be responsible, get good grades. And I did. I went to college three different times. <laughs> Um, for those who don't know, I went to film school. So I ended up, you know, during COVID, I went back to school because I had nothing better to do. So I got a master's degree. I have a master's degree in cybersecurity. I have yet to get a job in cyber. I've had this degree for two years. I have yet to get a, a job in this field. It is insanely competitive, even at the lowest level, which is IT help desk support. I, I, I would have to like hold a person at gunpoint to get a job, it feels like. That's how it felt during my unemployment spout uh, for, for most of last year. It was awful. Sometimes you are dealt a good hand and you do play your cards well. And then the dealer says otherwise, you know, life can just go a different direction. And that's something too, that I think many people need to come to terms with is that life, you know, when you push one way, life pushes another. It sometimes pushes you where you are maybe more needed. It depends on how you view things, but sometimes life can lead you down a different path that is unexpected that can also teach you some really cool things. Um, I wanted to be in sales for a little while and then eventually I didn't, but life kind of kept pushing me that way. I just kind of ended up getting sucked into sales jobs a lot and I made a decent amount of money doing it. Um, I did better than most people for a little while and then layoffs happened. Um, and now I work in accounting. So I'm, I'm a number cruncher for a living. And it's, it's brutal. It's, it was a punch in the gut to lose such a, a nice base salary and a bunch of perks. But at the same time, you know, I'm learning something new. I have cool coworkers. You know, I, I don't know. Life can screw you one way and then another and another and another. And I've, you know, I, I understand some of you have probably suffered more than me and some of you maybe less. Um, but I grew up with a very turbulent lifestyle. I have great parents, but their health is not so great and it hasn't been for years. And so I just kind of got used to the unpredictability that life offers and you learn to see the positives. I know it's hard when you're in the thick of it to, to see the positives, to see the benefit of your own suffering. Um, I can tell you for a fact when I was unemployed and I was doing DoorDash to make some kind of money, 
I didn't really see the positives. I was angry. I was upset. I wanted things to work. I wanted someone to... I couldn't get a job at a retail store. I had to, I had to take my education off my resume just to get calls back. Um, anyway, you know, life life just pushes you some... Sometimes the, the current of life, that's what I'm trying to say, pushes you in the wrong... What feels like the wrong direction. But in the end, you should try to see what you can gain from it because ultimately your happiness and your emotions are really what's the thing you can control and if if you are looking for the positives in the worst situations you always win because I have co-workers who are bitter about life they're in unhappy marriages they have you know, they've inherited, uh, how do I say this politely? They have families that they don't necessarily want or get along with. They have in-laws that they hate. Um, and so many people, I think, get frustrated with life and they want things now. Even before the age of TikTok and Vine and all that, still people want instant gratification because patience is stupid. It sucks to be patient. And so many people sacrifice things. They, they, they compromise, that's the better word. They compromise these things that they don't need to. And they cause themselves undue suffering. So, I don't know. I've been rambling for a good 12, 15 minutes now. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to keep. But in so many words, keep your chin up. Look for the positives in life. Look for the things that you're experiencing now that you can benefit from later. You know, keep keep going. Most oh, And of course, most importantly, just enjoy your hobbies. Don't, don't make that your second living because you're just going to be miserable. And really, you only get one life and everything else in life is going to try to make you miserable. So don't do it to yourself. Uh, If you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, sub if you want. If not, that's fine. Um, To all 35 of you that see this video, you guys are awesome. You guys give me a reason to go live every time I do. You guys give me a reason to upload videos every time I do. So thank you for your incredible support. And I'll see you next time.